What are the negative benefits or the negative effects of this? This is an explosive uh, area of conversation and that uh, puts my life in danger. So I, I reserve the right not to answer your question. Whoa. I didn't expect that. It puts your life in danger talking about portobello mushrooms? He's looking at me silently. I will uh, rep respectfully move on. Thank you. And so anybody who's interested, just Google that and get back to me. <laughs> Joe Rogan recently revealed shocking new details about Steven Spielberg that have stunned fans. The revelations, which are causing a stir, delve into aspects of Spielberg's career and personal life that many were unaware of. This has ignited intense discussions online as Rogan's insights challenged the public's perception of the iconic filmmaker. I was doing my first documentary back in 1997 when I was just naive enough to think I can get an interview with Steven Spielberg. We had a mutual friend involved, uh, this woman Janet, and uh, she gets back to me and she's like, yeah, so uh, Spielberg's definitely not going to meet with you, but he knows you're working on this UFO documentary. He thinks you should look into this landing case that happened in Africa at the school. And I said to myself at the time, and remind you know remind you guys that I was making a film on UFOs and I dismissed it so quickly because I thought there's no way that a mass landing with the sheer volume of eyewitness testimony at a school in broad daylight could happen and the whole world not know about it. So Weird crazy. So I just walked away from that story for about 10 years. Neil deGrasse Tyson and Joe Rogan recently engaged in a conversation about Steven Spielberg films and the concept of aliens. During their discussion, Tyson recounted an encounter with Spielberg, during which he learned about Spielberg's creative vision for E.T. Tyson explained that Spielberg imagined E.T. as a vegetable rather than an animal. Okay. Uh, can I name drop for a minute? Please. Can I name drop? I love a okay. good name drop. Okay. Uh, Steven Spielberg once oh, swung you know by him? my office. Well, we met. We've met. And tell him I'm a big fan. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. And he had one of his kids. He had several kids. He had brought one to the Hayden Planetarium in my office. And the, the museum got word that he was in town. He has an apartment nearby. So they asked if, if he could come by in, in, a, in addition to other uh, activities at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where I work. So I'm a little worried about that. But then I think about it and I say every, nearly every portrayal of an alien in Hollywood is evil. Going right on back to War of the Worlds. Steven Spielberg has achieved immense fame throughout his career thanks to his hard work and dedication to filmmaking. Known for his relentless drive and productivity, he has consistently delivered iconic films that have shaped the industry. While many recognize his impressive achievements, there's also a less visible side to his success that remains the subject of speculation. Your father was a computer scientist. Your mother was a musician. When the spaceship lands, how do they communicate? That's they... a very good question. I like that. <laughs> You've answered the question. They make music on their computers, and they are able to speak to each other. And you see, I'd love to say, you know, I intended that, and I realized that was my mother and father, but not until this moment. <laughs> Thank you for that. I just want to take a moment to celebrate this run Steven Spielberg's been on over the past month. He was like the most fun person in the audience at the Oscars. He played along with all the jokes, gave Christopher Nolan best director, and now he's just on this run where he's going around telling people how great their movies are. He told Ryan Gosling he loved The Fall Guy, and now he is, correctly, calling Dune Part 2 a masterpiece. I want a new movie from this man yesterday. But until he gives me one, this genial elder statesman thing he has going on has been a balm for my soul. Steven Spielberg has inspired countless individuals by consistently showcasing his positive side to the world. Through his films and public persona, he has demonstrated creativity, resilience, and a passion for storytelling. His ability to connect with audiences on emotional levels has left a lasting impact, encouraging aspiring filmmakers and artists to pursue their dreams and embrace their creativity. It's not about camera magic. Yeah. I mean, when I'm looking at student films or I'm looking at first-time directors short films I'm not looking for how great the camera is I mean so many people I can look at any TV commercial and know that there are directors out there that can place a camera and sell a product can they tell a story that that holds together it is compelling and, 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 and original and that's the secret you know I, I, I'm more interested in the storyteller doesn't know anything about where to put the camera 
than someone who knows everything about the camera but nothing about the story process. What I find with you is that it's truly what interests you, what it is you want to know at that point, what it is you want to see. And I think it's okay that, that a first-time filmmaker uh, being so inspired by movies and music videos and any kind of music or media um, um, can make a derivative film. It's okay that your first videos and your first attempts at telling a story are derivative, are obviously influenced by something that you know that you saw last week and you want to kind of do a version there's nothing wrong with learning the abc's learning your craft while steven spielberg has long presented a positive image to the public many are unaware of the complexities behind his persona similar to oprah winfrey both have achieved immense success and captured the public's affection but recent allegations have cast doubt on their true characters joe rogan has contributed to this narrative by shedding light on these revelations about both figures <laughs> I love Oprah. Don't get me wrong. I think she's a wonderful woman. I think she's a powerful force of good and positive energy. But she ain't no Elon. <laughs> but she also brought us Dr. Oz and The Secret. We, we, have, we have to remember what this lady has done. <laughs> she has to be held accountable. <laughs> I forgive her, but I mean, cut the shit. The Secret is a particularly egregious uh, offense. What? You don't, you just. Oh, you don't believe? You don't... Until I take off. What's up? Yeah. It was one of the more dis confu I want to say disturbing, but it was confusing when that was taking hold with people. When I, I, I had friends that were telling me that the secret is real. While the Hollywood industry is frequently viewed as a glamorous realm filled with glitz, glamour and success, it also harbours a dark side that remains largely hidden from public view. Artists like Prince have shed light on these underlying issues, revealing the exploitation, manipulation and pressures that many artists face, challenging the idealised perception of the industry and exposing its more troubling realities. I know you haven't always loved the internet, uh, how are you seeing progress right now with all of that? Can you use it to your advantage? Um, it, it's a double-edged sword, you know. A lot of artists aren't getting paid full scale for their art. And the internet, because of downloading and things like that, is kind of like a black hole. And it's hard to audit, it's hard to get accounting. And it's not that it's just about the money but it's about justice and fairness and when people say that they love you and they respect you but at the same time take you know 80 percent of your earnings then and then expect you to fix your own communities and they'll probably edit all of this out but <laughs> then it gets that's that's the sharp part of the sword and we're at the wrong end of it right now so eventually with Courageous people going out there and actually saying something and standing up for it, I think we'll get some balance. Steven Spielberg has frequently been the subject of serious accusations, including allegations of paedophilia. His associations with controversial figures like Oprah, Diddy and Jack Nicholson raise questions about the type of company he keeps. These connections suggest that he may share similar values or behaviours as those around him, further complicating his public image. Were you surprised when you saw all these accusations of harassment in Hollywood? I, I you know, it, it was I surprised? I wasn't, I was shocked, but I wasn't surprised because if you have peripheral vision, you're going to sense these things out of the corner of your eye. You can't not know that this has been going on rampantly for, I, I can't even tell you how many decades, but this is something that is being dealt with today and the courage of these women that are coming forward. As Diddy's legal situation develops, rumors indicate that additional high-profile celebrities like Steven Spielberg may be linked to his parties and could face implications. Reports have surfaced mentioning A-list names associated with Diddy's gatherings, leading to speculation that this scandal could ensnare more than just the music mogul. The expanding roster of alleged connections raises concerns about the extent of corruption within the entertainment industry. I also was just recently contacted by someone who wanted me to essentially represent them in the sale of one of the Diddy tapes. Uh, you're saying that there's tapes and they're being shopped? Yes, there have been people already shopping. We've heard about the tapes, but yes. it, it, the, the shopping thing is Yes, there new. already have been tapes uh, leaking around Hollywood, being shopped around to individuals in Hollywood. But one particular person contacted me to shop 
a particular video they were in possession of and to contact the person who was in the video to see if they were interested in purchasing the video before it became a public knowledge. Uh, I've heard this before. So like a catch and kill. Catch and kill, correct. Wow. Can you, and I guess you can't reveal the person who is on No, I can't tape. explain who the person was, but Mr. High profile? Combs, Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is, I would venture to say, more high profile than Mr. Combs. An additional aspect of these conspiracies involves the close friendship between Spielberg and Oprah Winfrey, both influential figures in Hollywood. Their connection raises eyebrows, as both have faced scrutiny for their relationships with other controversial individuals. This alliance suggests a network of powerful personalities, leading to speculation about their shared values and the potential implications of their associations within the industry. It makes sense why he's friends with such terrible people, like Roman Polanski, Jack Nicholson, and Oprah. It's because Steven is just as bad as them and the rest of Hollywood. So there's gonna be a lot of reading in this next bit, but pretty much this is the conversation between these men on how this story would go and I think it speaks a lot to their character. George said, I was thinking that this old guy could have been his mentor. He could have known this little girl when she was just a kid, had an affair with her when she was 11. Lauren said, and he was 42, which is creepy. George replied, he hasn't seen her in 12 years. Now she's 22. It's a real strange relationship. Steven chimed in and he said, she had better be older than 22. Recent allegations concerning Oprah's possible involvement in Diddy's ongoing scandal have left many fans feeling shocked and betrayed. Additionally, connections between Spielberg and Oprah are emerging, raising questions about Spielberg's role in the unfolding conspiracies. My mom used to work for Oprah Winfrey, yeah. She was her flight attendant, attendant on her private airplane. Okay, that's pretty sick. There is way better people to flex on than Oprah Winfrey. Oh uh, no, I don't think that there is actually. I think Oprah's I know a Oprah big Winfrey flex. sucks. Oprah's dope as I'm I, I hate Oprah. Why do you hate Oprah? I have a personal reason to hate Oprah. She took my mom away from me, so ha. Just like, cause she had work? Yeah, my mom would be like two weeks in Africa. Hey, I'm gonna go to Nelson Mandela's house. Bro, I'm gonna go to Africa for two dope. Weeks. What are you hating for? My parents were gone a lot during my childhood. That's traumatic. Going and balling with Oprah. I don't know, it's kind of traumatic if you think about it. They I mean, my dad's a pilot as well, not for Oprah, but he was a Delta pilot. So my dad flew a 747, so they were gone a lot. I, yeah. I, I, no, had, I, nan I had nannies growing up. I can understand how that so would be So it's just, you know, I have a personal reason to not like Oprah. I don't really watch her in the media, so I don't care about that shit. I just know she's like wicked nice, that's it. I mean, hopefully nothing Ellen comes out about Oprah, so. And then you see my head shaking. Right <laughs> she's not nice. No, not really. Interesting. Sorry, Oprah. Entrepreneur Patrick Bet David has shared his thoughts on the Diddy case, linking it to a larger pattern of exploitation and illegal activities within Hollywood. He argues that Diddy's arrest is merely the latest scandal in an ongoing series affecting the entertainment industry, where influential figures, including Spielberg, often partake in unchecked behavior for years. What what new things have you found that maybe we should we should I know mean, about? It, it, it's not necessarily new, Pat, but it's like like just look at this pattern we, we, we've seen it before and everybody i'm telling you right now everybody in the music industry and everybody in hollywood knew about this okay there's no there's no bsing about it Pat. i knew about this guy when i was in hollywood and, and there's some other people that i know that have these type of parties i don't know about the cameras that i would never go to and i was warned not to go to okay it's not it's not a, it's it's no secret just like just like epstein just like harvey weinstein and everybody knew look at how many videos and everybody praised them uh michelle obama barack all all the videos are surfacing with him and dating all these people even usher Pat Usher deleted his Twitter account, deleted it, right? Or, or took everything down. He deleted a bunch of, uh, I think, 7,000 tweets and then came back a day later and he put me uh, again uh, yeah yeah no he, he wrote account got hacked and damn y'all ran with it it's 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 not a secret i'm tired of everybody playing this game okay the past friendship between steven spielberg and michael jackson noting that jackson was initially considered for the role of peter pan in spielberg's adaptation of the story however due to the negative public perception of jackson spielberg distanced himself from him this situation has led to speculation that spielberg may have 
inappropriate inclinations, contributing to conspiracy theories suggesting he is involved in child trafficking. Essentially, he writes an essay questioning why Steven Spielberg was very friendly with Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was supposed to play Peter Pan in Steven Spielberg's version of the story. Now people don't like Michael Jackson and Steven doesn't associate with Michael Jackson, essentially trying to push a narrative that maybe Steven likes little boys and that he's part of this child trafficking ring and they're trying to cover up their activities using people like, I guess, Michael Jackson. And it doesn't help his case when people like Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks are trending at the same time. For decades, conspiracy theories alleging that Steven Spielberg is a pedophile have circulated, often fueled by his associations with controversial figures and the content of some of his films. These theories suggest a hidden narrative about his character and intentions, raising questions about the relationships he maintains within Hollywood. Such speculation highlights the complexities and dangers of public perception surrounding influential individuals. Oh, and Matt Cohen and Dan Ferguson. Ooh. Where does Dan Ferguson work? No, uh, I'm not even going to talk about Spielberg, who, by the way, Steven Spielberg is a pedophile. Yep. See how easy that was, Corey? I didn't need $10 million. Julia Roberts has reportedly indicated that her memories of working with Steven Spielberg are not particularly positive, suggesting a challenging relationship with the renowned director. Her comments hint at possible tensions or dissatisfaction during their professional interactions, adding to the ongoing narrative about Spielberg's dynamics with other prominent figures in Hollywood and raising questions about his collaborative style. Can you keep, I mean, when you are upset personally, could you keep it out of the professional life? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, that's that's easy. Even though we read with Steven Spielberg when you went in to do Hook that he felt that the Steven two... Spielberg, I, I find quite confused in his recollection of me. So clear it up. Um, I never had a moment's trouble, sorrow, reflection, anything on the set of Hook. There's no doubt in my mind. And he talked more about his personal life. I know more about, you know, him and his life and, and you know, Amy Irving and what have you than I probably said about, about my own life, you know. But even that was quite conversational. And that wasn't sort of like saying, oh, my God, you're never going to. It was just so I find it, um, I find him to be, uh, unfortunately, not, not as... Not as good at remembering the time that we spent together as, uh, as I Steven Spielberg has faced numerous allegations regarding inappropriate behavior towards children, including claims of misconduct involving both boys and girls. These accusations have contributed to a controversial image, sparking discussions about the accountability of influential figures in the entertainment industry. But I heard a lot of weird stories about him, about him possibly doing things to Drew Barrymore, about him doing that, doing things to that one girl from the the Poltergeist movie, the little tiny girl with the blonde hair that said, um, they're here, who um, died in a very strange and mysterious way when she was very young. Um, kids from the, the Goonies set, like um, the Corys and um, the Asian boy from the Goonies, um, I heard so many weird stories about Steven Spielberg, whether he was inappropriate with little girls or inappropriate with little boys, but with this whole like Me Too movement going on, I would like them to really call out big names like Steven Spielberg if he did do it, like they did with Harvey Weinstein, which was great, but I think there's other fish out there, other big fish out there that they can, you know, fry, so, um... Steven Spielberg just might be one. In an interview, Spielberg allegedly expressed that he was not surprised by the scandals currently affecting Hollywood, suggesting that such behaviors have long been recognized. His comments imply an awareness of the darker aspects of the industry, reflecting a broader understanding of the issues that have come to light regarding misconduct among powerful figures in entertainment. Broke different glass ceilings over the last couple hundred years since the formation of our country. But Kay, Kay Graham, 
pretty much shattered a pretty important glass ceiling, but we, st we still have a long way to go. I mean, we're not anywhere near where we should have been based on the relationships that men and women have and the way women are perceived basically by men or, or the way power is used and abused. But things are changing and they're changing faster than I've ever seen things change. Steven Spielberg's friendship with Roman Polanski, who has faced serious allegations involving minors, raises questions about the type of company Spielberg keeps. This relationship implies that individuals often associate with others who share similar values or behaviors, highlighting a potentially troubling dynamic within their circle in Hollywood. Roman Polanski is an 88-year-old Polish-French film director. That's what they tell you. But he's not. Roman Polanski is a pedophile and a rapist, and he has been for over four fucking decades. In 1977, okay, so the year before the one that we're talking about, Roman Polanski drugged and sodomized a 13-year-old girl in Jack Nicholson's house, by the way. Jack Nicholson had nothing to do with this. Jack Dick Nicholson's house was often used for uh, photography sessions. So Jack didn't know, oh, John, Jesus. don't fucking go there. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Roman Polanski got caught and he fled the country to avoid persecution. That's what happened. And he's been a fugitive ever since. Do we not That's have what's extradition? Happened. I don't know. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.